Peace and love you beautiful miracles of spiritual level of being. Nathan here from a spiritual level of being and you have a spiritual level of being. Today we're going to be discussing the different types of Gnostic groups. Now, we're not going to be discussing them all as there were many, many different types of Gnostic groups. Now, we're going to be discussing some of the main ones. Now, there's a religious side of Gnosticism and there's a philosophy side of Gnosticism. Gnosis means spiritual knowledge from within. Everyone's going to have their own interpretation of spiritual knowledge. Gnosis. Now, certain Gnostics didn't belong to any faction or group of Gnosticism, but rather took the ideologies of all the certain groups and fit it into their own core or foundation of ideology. They were labelled as belonging to certain groups in order to persecute the media. Now, the Cathars, Catharism, who called themselves the good Christians, they believed that God is only good and there's no evil or corruption in him whatsoever. They believed that we always existed as angels within the Pleroma. Now, they believed that Satan, this evil lesser God, or in some accounts, the son of Satan, seduced us humans, well, us angels, to rebel against God, and in turn, we were punished to live in this evil creator God's imperfect world as a punishment as we were tainted by sin. Now, in order to stop this reincarnation process of endless suffering in an imperfect world, the individual must reject the material world and all its desires. Now, Otherwise, the soul will be stuck in this endless reincarnation process in an imperfect world. And they also believed in the final baptism, when one was ready to no longer have to reincarnate, to no longer have to live in ignorance, when they were full-on ready to embrace the plorma as they've rejected everything from this material world. They would have the final baptism, and this was when they were ready for death. Basically, they would maybe starve to death. Maybe some accounts they were poisoned. Now, some groups of Kafar were pescatarian and some were vegetarian, as they believed that all life contained a soul within it. So they didn't want to eat anything possessing a human soul. Now, the answer of fish is because they believed that fish split in two and didn't have intercourse, thus not having a soul within it. They believed they were created by God. Now, there were some Jewish people that believed this. Now, they were also pacifist and practiced pacifism. They were spiritual for life when they were bishops, so their priestly figures were fit in this role for life. Next we're discussing the Valentinians, Valentinianism. Now the Valentinians believed that in the beginning there was a Paroma, and in its centre was the Father, the true creator, the depth and understanding of all knowledge, the true path to knowledge and understanding, Gnosis. Now they believed that the Father projected from itself 15 heavenly archetypes, 15 sexually complementary pairs, the masculine and femme, and within this group was Sophia. So the Father is beyond sex. So in the physical form, we are the masculine and femme. Now, they believe that Sophia's weakness passion and curiosity led to her accidental creation of the Demiurge, who in turn, out of his ignorance, created the imperfect world. Now, the Valentinians believed that one had to recognise the Father, the depth of all, as the true source of the divine power, Gnosis. So this Gnosis being within you. Now, through this knowledge, the individual would receive positive consequences, karma, and would contribute to restoring the world out of ignorance into its original spiritual state. So bringing heaven on earth, the second coming of Christ. Now, it's through this spiritual knowledge, Gnosis, that brings salvation. So salvation is achieved through Gnosis, not through faith. Now, they believe that Christ is the male redeeming divinity figure that's redeeming Sophia. So redeeming us, so bringing us out of this fall to this achieving of Gnosis, the true understanding. So... The Valentinians believe that we are all the children of Sophia from her heavenly seed, the divine spark that descended, so descended into the lower worlds. Now the Sephians, the Sephian Gnostics, Sephianism. The Sephians believed that the true God had always existed and created the perfect realm, the Pleroma, and emanated from himself different archetypes, so aeons being, being each attributed as a different attribute of God. And within this realm of perfect being was the first of which being emanated from himself was Barbello, the mother father. Now, this is where all the powers of the creation derive from. Now, different Cephian groups had different foundations of beliefs. 
one of which believed that Sophia attempted to imitate the true divine, the true God, the unknowable God's reflection of itself or deriving emanations from itself. And in turn, she accidentally created Yada Bay off as she did this without the consent of the other Aeons and without her masculine pair being, in some accounts, Christ. So this non-union act, which formed to the creation of Yada Bay off, he then, who stole a shred of the divinity from his mother, attempts to emanate from himself and creates the material world. But when he creates humanity, he accidentally gives them this stolen spark. And then in turn, he tries to rectify this by stealing it from the humans, which is us. But Sophia transplants her spirit into a tree, the tree of knowledge, to awaken us humans. And Christ is sent here again to awake us humans to drive us to the spiritual knowledge from within ourselves to achieve our inner Christ so that way us humans can strive to return to this unknowable God to the realm of Barbello. So all these different groups have all many different beliefs and there were different types of Sephian Gnostics. So I couldn't just go off and describe every single one. Some were just labelled as belonging to Sephian groups as they picked up most of their main ideologies. Now we'll be discussing the philosophy side of Gnosticism, the independent groups that didn't belong to any faction, but rather took in the multiple different ideologies to form their own grounding movement, to truly understand that these stories are just stories, not meant to be taken literally, but symbolically. So the story of Christ being within you, so you can be like Christ. The idea of God emanating from itself, different archetypes, this is all of us. So collectively, we have always existed within the mind of God. We are this energy, the force of creation. So reincarnation is also within the rights of evolution. So progressing itself, seeking higher levels of consciousness. So Yara Bayoff, representing the illusion, the matrix of this world, basically it's not physical, but rather it's mental, it's of the mind, spiritual. So Yara Bayoff also could represent life coming to be by accident, and we are the experience experiencing itself. It also represents that life kind of be primitively, and then as it evolves, it becomes more aware. Now the idea of God being all life itself. So the idea of no karma. So rather the idea of if we're shitty people, we're just going to have to repeat the same shit over again until we get it right. So the idea of spiritual knowledge being within oneself, the monad. So we are multiple minds making up the cosmic mind of God. So this is my particular belief. So I'm an independent Gnostic, just a Gnostic Christian. So I don't belong to any particular group. So notice that spiritual knowledge is within you. So it's up to your own interpretation of it. So peace and love everyone, I love you all, connect to my mind and soul, namaste.